I want to teach you some of the most efficient ways I know of learning anything and then I'm going to show you how we apply them to learning how to play the guitar. So what am I going to cover in this video? Well, I want to focus on the basic principles. I'll introduce you to the basic principles and these principles apply to a broad range of subjects. This is not just about learning to play the guitar. You can use this in academic subjects, learning languages to learning maths and things like that. You can use this in sports as well. A lot of these principles come from sports science, for example. And you can also use it obviously to learn to play an instrument like learning to play the guitar. So what I'll do is I'll introduce those principles I then want to talk about actually applying this. I'm going to give you an example of how you could do this, how you could create a session. And then we'll run through that in this video as well. Okay, so the first principle then is that we learn really when we recall. It's the act of recalling. It's the act of explaining this to other people. It's the act of using this that pushes the thing you're trying to remember from short-term memory into long-term memory. It's not the act of rereading your notes or underlining your notes. It's not the act of watching a YouTube video on the subject. These are all passive strategies and they don't work that well at all. You can spend hours doing passive strategies and they don't force the information into your long-term memory to anything like the same degree as you get when you actively use it, when you're active with the information that you want to recall, when you're actually using this or when you're actually explaining this to other people. The next principles really relate to how you space out your practice, how you space out your learning. And these are kind of in two levels as well. One is within the session, and it's about interleaving the things that you're trying to learn within the session rather than blocking them out. So you find that you're much more likely to memorize the thing if you have three or four or five different related principles and you work on them in short, short intervals rather than doing big blocks of, of section one and then a big block of section two and a big block of section three. So the key here is to mix up the practice of related types, related pieces of information. Because your learning will come from the discernment of the differences between these related types and re-recalling and re-recalling. And this is true whether it's when you're playing an instrument or whether you're learning a language. The other part to uh, spacing out is spacing out over a number of days. So a series of smaller sessions will give you a much better return than one huge block in one day. Now what you can do and what does work is to mix different sessions up. So you can do a 30 minute session on playing the one aspect of playing the guitar and then a 30 minute session on a different aspect of playing the guitar or learning something new. And you find that they don't interfere with each other if you do that. But as I say, what you really need to be doing is thinking about breaking your sessions up over days rather than cramming one huge session up into one day. Okay, so let's try and block out a practice session based on these principles. So what I thought I'd do is um, work on learning all five positions of the caged scales going up and down the neck. Now, if, if that's a bit advanced for you, you could, for example, work on all five positions of the pentatonic scale. Or if you already know your cage, you could work on the chords within, within each position, or the arpeggios within each position, or you could work out things like, I don't know, two, five, one progressions within each position. But find something that you want to work on in each of those five positions. And then what, what I want you to do is to block out a period of time. What we need is a, a nice block of, say, 30 minutes of uninterrupted time when you can focus on what you're doing, when you can apply these principles and you're not going to be disturbed. And then the other thing I find really useful here is to have a timer, uh, whether it's an app on your phone or, or a separate timer, it doesn't really matter. But what we want to do is to break up our sessions 
into these two minute segments, into a series of two minute segments. So we can interleave these segments and turn that into our practice plan. And it's really useful to have that timer because it's very easy to sort of get lost in one position and you find you've just burnt five or 10 minutes working in one position and you've forgotten to move on to the next one. So this, this is a really useful thing to just prompt you and to keep that, that uh, emphasis going. The final thing to do is to think about how you want to interleave these sessions and how long you want to work on this for. So as I say, I've got five positions going up the neck and I find if 30 minutes is a decent amount of time to focus on this. So if I do two minutes per position, I can do each position three times. So how do I want to mix those up over my 30 minute period? My own preference is to focus on a couple of positions to start with if this is new at the start of the session and then add some later on. So what I thought I'd do is do an interleave like the one I, I just put up on the screen at the moment. So I'm talking about cage positions so you can see these are named after the bar chords inside each position. So I'd be working on the C position first, then I'd be working on the A, and then I'd bounce back to C and bounce back to A, so that sort of works those two in. And then I move on to the next two positions. So what's that? That's G and E. And you can see how this works and how I'd work my way through my session. Okay, so let's talk about how I go about doing one of these sessions. Okay, so the first thing I do is I look at my piece of paper, I look at the shape that I want to learn and I start to try and visualize it in my head. And I start to play it on the guitar now. And see what that feels like. And I'm looking for obvious things like where are the root notes? So what key am I in? There's my root note, I must be in the key of F major. And I, I try and incorporate things I already know, like I know my bar C chord fits just there. And I know my pentatonic in this position. And as I know that, I build those into the shape. And, and I can see other chords within here as well, like there's an A minor and there's an E minor bar chord and there's a G bar chord and there's a D minor bar chord as well. All hidden in this shape. And so that's what I do for two minutes and then I move on to the next one. So the next one is the, the A pattern. And again, as this is the first time I've played through it, I might refer to my notes first. And I look at this and I can see I've got two notes on the E strings and three notes on every other string. And that's different from the previous, which only had two notes on the G string. Yeah? And I look, I can see there are my root notes and I can see that root note is common between the C and the A shape. And I can see that there are other common notes between these two shapes as well. And I look for those, and then I look for chords inside that. And I do that for two minutes, and then at the end of two minutes, I move on to the next, and that's actually taking me back to C again. And this time round, I try not to refer to my notes at all. I try to bring everything up from memory, see if I can remember the shape. And again, I work my way around the C shape, seeing how many, how many references, how many things I can bring into this and whether I can memorize the shape. And then I move on to the next one, which is back to the A, so I see if I can memorize that. And I only refer to my notes when I move on to a shape that I've never encountered before. And I try and commit that to memory. And so I work my way through this whole plan, section by section, until I've hit the end. And once I've hit the end, that's when I take a break. So to summarize then, the best learning happens when you recall 
the information. When you bring it back, when you're actually using it, when you're explaining it, when you're talking about the principles, that's when you really learn the subject. Not when you're first reading about it, not when you're passively watching a YouTube video. So make, make that commitment to give this a try. Actually get your hands dirty, pick up your guitar, find that 30 minutes and have a go at this stuff. The other thing is all about spacing, it's all about interleaving, so find two or three or four related pieces of information and learn them all in one chunk in an interleaved way and you'll find that that process of interleaving allows you to spot the differences, spot the similarities between those, those different parts and that will all contribute to the learning as well. And then finally, it's all about how you space this throughout the week as well. So don't try cramming everything in one epic session in one day and expecting that to stick. Break it down into smaller sessions and do it throughout the week as well. And you'll find all of those three will contribute to a much better piece of learning. If you want to find more out about this, if you want to understand the science behind this, if you want to find out more about the research behind this as well, there's a really good book that covers this and that book is called Making It Stick. So check that out if you want to and there's plenty of videos on YouTube and websites and things like that if you, if you can't afford to buy the book as well. So anyway, that's it for this week and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.